Hey everybody, it's Kevin from KC Photography and Design Studios. Today I'm going to pit my DSLR against a program on the iPhone to create levitation photography. Stick around. Okay, so I came across this program on the internet called Levitogram. I thought I would try it out. I was interested in doing some levitation photography. It's just a brief explanation of how this application works. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. I decided to go with the Valentine's theme. So what you needed to do was you needed to take two images. The first image was elevated. I just used whatever I had on hand to hold this candle up. Just for effect, I decided to light them as well. Took the first picture, then removed everything, and took the second. Now according to the app, it's going to automatically line these photos. And basically what you do is you use the zoom tool to zoom in and erase the support structure. As you can see the shadows underneath, I'm not really sure what you're supposed to do about that because they have to come out because for some reason there seems to be some kind of a color shift or exposure shift and I'm not really sure why because it was taken seconds apart and the lighting was exactly the same. Also it was a dif bit difficult because you had to zoom in and zoom out. Add that to the fact that the brush that you can't tell on this screenshot was as big as my finger so it was hard to get the edges perfectly um, but there are simple editing tools in this application crop color things like that so I just decided to crop this and this is what my result was okay so now I'm going to try this with the DSLR it's the same process that I did with the app The difference here is that with this second shot with nothing there, I've locked the focus so it doesn't refocus on something else and ruin the images. So I brought the two into Photoshop, put them on separate layers. The exposure seems a bit different. I'm not really concerned about that. As I said in the Levitogram app, I had the same issue, but the bottom half is going to be erased anyways, so it won't be noticed. I am going to go ahead and try to match as close as possible the exposure, but again, I'm not too worried about it, as that will be the bottom layer I can adjust afterwards. Basically the same process as the app, but I have a lot more control here. I'm just going to go ahead and erase this. And that's what I got. After looking at this further, I had noticed that I didn't see a shadow under there and I wasn't too happy about that. So what I decided to do was just add one after the fact. Okay, these are the two images side by side. As you can see, I've added the drop shadow. Overall, I think I'm happier with the DSLR version. The image quality is obviously better and bringing the images into Photoshop gave me greater control as opposed to the Levitogram app. The app was a bit hard to use. I didn't like the exposure shift nor the fact that there was no ability to undo if you made a mistake. I also didn't like the fact that my finger seemed to get in the way. I'm sure you could have used the stylus, but if you didn't have one, the app would be hard to use. Levitogram is only $1.99, but I think as a novelty app, this one misses the mark just a bit. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Stay tuned at the end of the video for stunning examples of levitation photography. Feel free to comment down below and subscribe to see future videos. Always keep learning, and we will see you again soon.